All right, everybody, how are we doing tonight? Throw me a quick Y if you can see my screen and hear my voice. Excellent. Nice to see everybody. Give you a couple seconds here to get settled. Hey, Tony, Andrew, Dakota, what's up? Hope you guys are doing okay. All right, let's do this. Welcome to the webinar, Beat the Market Maker with Steve Morrow. It is Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. Hope everybody's doing great. Got a lot of great stuff going on in the markets, fun always. Good stuff to talk about tonight. All right, so want to welcome all the new guys in. Happy to have you and my returning students. Always a pleasure. We are literally midway through the third quarter. So tonight, it will be exactly even. We will take one off of here, add it over here, and you'll be 46 by 46. And that means you're halfway through 90 days. And then that puts you into September. And then you're looking at the last quarter of the year, just like that, October, November, and December. And we know how that goes. Right after Thanksgiving, you can forget it pretty much. All right, hope you guys enjoying this book. Anybody reading this? Anybody taking the time? It was okay. I like the guy, but I hate how these a lot of these books turn out nowadays. These audiobooks, they turn into a pitch for his podcast and other bullshit. I hate that. But he has an interesting story, man. Anyway, hope it, hope you guys enjoyed it. So here we are, where we're sitting at. So done, done, done. We're sitting here at the 17th. Got another week and a half. And then we're looking at Labor Day. And before you know, it's going to be October, man. Just like that. And you know how that last year goes, right? I always tell you guys, this is a bust from here last week of November going into Thanksgiving. That's it. This is what you're looking at for the rest of the year. So you got to start asking yourself the hard questions. I started in January full of enthusiasm. Where am I? What have I accomplished? Have I got everything I came here to, to visit with Steve for? If the answer is no, you got to roll up your sleeves, man. You're running out of time for this year. So the general idea is if you're not where you want to be, you need to make some goals going into this last quarter and to come out again full steam in January ahead of the curve. It, it sounds so simple, and I talk about it every week, but the problem is I understand what everybody's going through. So I lived it just like everyone else did. And I'm going to talk about tonight how the difference between break even, losing, and winning is just a few little nuances, man. It's a few simple things done consistently and done over and over again. And that's what's missing for a lot of people. But the problem is there's emotion involved and there's money involved, or there's a lot more emotion involved when money is involved. There's a better way to say that. You guys got to figure out how to get through that. I'll talk about it tonight. And headbanding goes a long way. So I got a lot of weird emails this week. I guess culmination of all the stuff I've been talking about and different things. I'm going to cover them. And uh, no disrespect to anybody that submitted them, but the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Never, ever try to hurt anybody's feelings, but just like to talk about stuff. All right. So here we are. Pop quiz. It's probably going to take you longer than a minute, but give me everything you can identify, right? I'm looking for the background on this stuff, what happened, how we got here, and 
tell me the patterns, the best entry, all that stuff, as much as you can in a minute, and I'll give you the full minute. I, I usually never do, but I'm going to do this. Alexa, set a one-minute timer. I'm looking for more than that, what you guys are writing. All right, so what do you got? Throw some ideas out. Okay, first of all, back up. I talked about this stuff last week. Okay, so what's the context coming into this? Anybody? Background, background, what's going on in the background? I've talked about this stuff individually with some people and I've said it, but I wanna say it again. So, Steve, well, how come some of my trades work out flawlessly and how come sometimes they don't and it's the same setup? And the answer is simple, background. Higher time frame, levels, areas, flips on the chart. Certain spots of the chart are more successful than others. So that's background stuff. So what's going on in the background? What am I looking for on this? All right. I'm going to tell you because no one's answering. So you're, you're looking too microscopic. I want background for the last several days. Okay, so last week we talked about, okay, consolidating off the high. What's, what's the play? The play was if there was enough room in GBP to swing back to the high, right, from here to here long or from here short. This is exactly what I said, man. Okay, and if you notice, if you go back and start looking at GBP, they do a lot of outside bars, inside reversal. That's a common play. It is in the futures contract, and I'm pretty sure they're the same. They flow the same. Okay, so last week after I talked about this, it issued exactly what I said. Then what did it do? It went about two and a half times ADR to the sell side. Leading into this trade, you were... Just call it three times ADR, all short. What usually happens? This. And th what is this exactly in context? This is one more push towards the lows to trap all the suckers, I mean retail traders, to go short. One last push because you had three days of drop, right? Three days of sell side. They built out a nice M structure. They dropped. They straight away, consolidated, hit it again, hit it again, and then they were here sitting right here then what was the move hit the stops low which looks like a continued drop for trend trading trend followers right oh man look at that look short i'm not sure oh man look it did it again i'm not sure guess what i'm sure i'm going short whoops sorry about your luck man you chased it in some bullshit dead end okay that's the context that's the background did you notice that when they made the pull long, it went for about 100 ticks, 112 on uh, futures contract. That's a fantastic move in futures. But why so much? And it came out of there like a rocket. Why? Because look at all this work in here, all this trap, all this trap. And they had to get everybody that piled on day two. They took them out by going above the ADR for the futures contract and trapping lower level shorts, man. All the lower level shorts in this area are stuck. So that's the background. Okay, so now I understand the background. I understand what's going on in context. What's my trade? 
Okay, this is the kind of stuff that if you're not walking up to the chart and asking yourself, this is what's hurting you in the business. You got to understand the context of the or the background, whatever you want to call it, of what's going on on a chart. If you don't look at the background, then you're going to take a trade in the wrong directional bias or the wrong directional move. Anybody care to admit if they went short, not realizing you were on day three of a cycle? The, the thing that's crazy is I've been talking about this for 20 years. What has it been? 12 years teaching it, looking at it for 20 years. It's the same. It's literally SSDD, man. It's week in and week out. The problem is everybody's so focused on getting a tight entry, you're missing the one hour or the four hour to give yourself the background. That's the stuff. That's the difference between success and failure. And then it's a couple little nuances in your behavior. Okay, so let's look at this stuff. All right, what do you have? You have a huge push to the low, right? Close above. At, at the moment, you have this level. Right. If you look, let me clear this up and, and try to be more precise tonight. OK, look at these levels right here. OK, right here. I'm going to point to them. Now I'm going to take see how that was orange. And then it faded. OK, so you could take literally take this high high bar and draw it out like this. And take this high swing and draw it out like this. OK, there's your box. OK, that's your high side box. They hit the stops, they make the low swing and pull back. Okay, now you can look at this liquidity, right? This liquidity stop there, and this liquidity bled into the bottom of the low. You could draw it like this. Okay, there's your boxes, right? Now, price made a wide swing, leg one, L1. You got no business getting on board anywhere on this shit. Okay? There's a green bubble when price is moving down. Why? Anybody? Green bubble, price moving down. Why? Quick, type it. Come on. Don't think about it. Just put it out there. Dakota got it. Absorption, but not as clear. Dakota's answer was better. Okay. So, here's what happens. Right? Chop. People get on board somewhere in here. Price goes down. Traps lower level shorts, pulls back. People come back for the second leg, start selling in to the downside, right? Thinking that this is the high swing going in the lows. Dealers are buying from people selling. So you get a big Pac-Man in there. And then look at this brick of liquidity right here. Price is not going to get above that until they decide, all right? They consolidate low. Look at all this execution in here. This is all execution on the bars and pressing, all right? Price squeezes in. So now you got your low swings not violated. When this liquidity goes in and they press price down lower into lower level consolidation, right? Lower level shorts are hung up. Maybe they're in a good place from here or from here. Some guys got, they're up maybe six, seven pips. Okay, now, this line is still a good level to lean on. But when they press the top side and don't take out the bottom side, here's your new level. Okay, look, bam, draw across the top. Now, this becomes very interesting to me over here. Why? You got a 50 EMA coming through there. You got pressing. The whole range is, look, look at price point. 2040 down to 2020. This is a 20 pip consolidation zone. Man, I like that. That's solid. Okay. What's the execution? There's two trade entries here, and both of them were fantastic. Okay. You got the first break above, pull back into long, right? They took out the first level and they fished right back into the black area on the chart, right? That means liquidity. Push. Come back for a low volume type, nothing there, right? The suck back. They take it again. They close above. They come back into a black area on the chart, suck back. This is the best entry. This is an add-on or a pretty good entry too. And then off to the races into the high. They throw the liquidity out in front, becomes the high of the day. Nobody's getting through that. 
right? So you would draw your box like this on the high swing. And that's it. That's your whole day. And then the same, the process repeats itself. They never get above. They go into consolidation. Day's over. This is 8 o'clock the next day, right? Here's the end of day right here. Zero liquidity. Market goes dead. 4 o'clock in the futures contract. And then it comes past the, the rollover time, settlement, and then it starts back up. That's it. That was the trade of the day, right? And this went for 112 ticks in futures. And I'm sure it was somewhere around there in the in the Forex contract. Same thing. But the thing is the context of what's going on. What made this possible? Right? It everyone, Steve, it's a downtrend. Okay, yeah, it was a downtrend. But they went three days drop, the market's got a pop. I haven't said that shit in a long time, but it nothing's changed. After a big rise, the market needs more guys. So they pull back, tap everybody out. This is basically a pullback and a downtrend. They took everybody out. Okay, after you get this trade, the next day is usually a bust. Today kind of sucked, especially in Euro. Right? There was some opportunity there, but it was very choppy and you couldn't get a clean entry. So this day, after you have this move, Right, and I always I haven't said this in a while either. And you get three days setups, and then you get this big pop out of the way. Take the day off, you greedy bastards. <laughs> right? Why? Because you know the next day it's going to do this. So, what happens is you have three, four great days of trading, easy setups, and then you come and you, and you beat yourself up the next day and you don't understand what the hell's wrong with you and you end up getting stopped out a couple of three times, right? Those are the little nuances that I can't teach you. I've said it a hundred times, maybe a thousand in the last 20 years. But if you don't listen to me, then what the hell? Right? It's perfect. This is absolutely perfect. This is everything I've ever drawn and what was handed to me on a napkin 23 years ago. This is it. Does it do this every single time perfect like that? No, of course not. But it does it enough that you should be able to scratch out a living for yourself, a pretty damn good living. But you're not paying attention to the, the background. You're too excited about this short-term shit that you're missing the good stuff. Right? That's what the point of a check down is. If you just come up and you go, man, it looks like a W, I'm going to take it or an M, you're going to get lucky sometimes. You're not in the luck business. So we're not gambling here. You're taking calculated risk. Make sense? All right, let me read these comments. Okay, so what's the anchor for the next three to five days? That's a good question. I don't know. I got to wait for something to develop. Okay, so tonight we have to see what happens. But what are the possibilities? You're going to box in the action again. You're going to box in the action, right? This, if you start just drawing these liquidity levels in the book and start putting it into context, the Asian range, what's the Asian range? The Asian range is two levels of liquidity blocking price and creating that consolidation zone. Okay, so if I have a consolidation zone coming into tomorrow, what am I looking for? Break above, find that anchor high, and then reverse back through, right? Here, here, into some kind of level, right? If we get a break below, this is 100 pips away, right? We know this is 100 pips away, so what's a probability? Looking for some other spot on the chart, maybe here, 50 pips away, that would give us somewhere to rest and go higher. Look to the left. From a few days back and see where the last swing high was or the last pressing area where they flip below. Draw a box. Take the daily or the four hour and extend some boxes out there and see what you get. Just because I'm telling you to draw a liquidity box doesn't mean the minute it gets there you take a trade. It's got to show you something. It's got to show you. It's got to show you the behavior at the level, right? So if we come down in here and we get this, we're long. If we get spike outside below, tap, tap, drop, 
that's how we're going to work it. And I'll show you an exact picture of this. I'm almost positive I put that slide in of what that looks like. Okay, what else? What else could give us context? Anybody? Anyone? Throw it out there. Come on. Make my day. What else can give you something to lean on? There's several things. What can you lean on? Think. Yep, time of day, not exactly what I'm looking for. On a chart, landmark on the chart, which time, of, which uh, give you some directional move. Not exactly candle pattern, warmer. All right, I got to say it. Blue tracer, daily open, AR lines. That'll give you moving averages. That'll give you context, right? Right now, we know the moving averages curve back up, right? So what would happen? Let's just say price comes in and does something like that off the average, or you get an AR number in the open zone. Right, and price comes in linear and taps that zone and drops out of there. How about if you get a blue tracer and an average or some shit lining up like that? Those are the things that you're looking for to give you context. It's background stuff. I don't know if anyone still uses the template. I don't use it anymore because I'm not using MetaTrader. But the three views of just the moving averages. Yep, absolutely, Al. Good. Yeah, so looking at context. So if you have all the moving averages pointing down, it's been three days and they're starting to cross over. Okay, so you got a fresh cross bounce trade, right? You get fresh cross moving average. You might get some kind of bounce W into there, continuation, right? Maybe you there's some miracle, the blue tracer, the open price and the AR and the crossover. If all that shit's there and you don't take it, you might as well kill yourself now. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. There's like 10 things. If all those things line up, it's a lock. At the very least, you should scratch on that. I'm kidding. It probably won't happen. But that's the stuff, the context that I've discussed it 100 times. But if you're not looking at this stuff and you're not paying attention to it and you're just taking M's and W's, that's why you're getting your ass kicked. Right, you're taking a false M or false W on day two, and you're getting you're getting crushed, man. This is the kind of stuff I've discussed it and I've showed it to you. But if you don't tie it together in some type of routine for yourself, you're not learning from me. You're just listening to me. I'm talking at you, and that's probably ninety percent of anyone who's struggling's problem. You know, there's some guys that are that are right on the edge, and I, hopefully, I'll get to that tonight. If not, I'll do it next week. All right, so let me jump in. Let me change. Let me change gears. Before I change gears, any more? Any more about this? Okay, this was the this was the trade of the week. In addition to the day before that, it was the trade of the week. The day before that was the trade of the week. It was it's an easy week when it like, goes like this. It's literally a, the access code to my ATM card, or your own ATM card, man. And if you're not capitalized on that. I'm failing you as a teacher, man. You have to be able to understand and put this all together. You understand? Ask it. Ask the question. Quickly before I move on, please. That's okay. So the question was, you had a, a W off of blue. Okay, the market reset on blue trace and went short the next day, but we had a W off the Mayo long. Okay, well, that's context. What was the overall directional bias? Draw the boxes. Show me the bias. Wait for them to show you something. This is, look, I I understand about wanting to take action, but you have to be reactive. If you box this in and you saw something else besides this, I don't know what you saw. You got it. This is, this is the only play. This is boxed in. It's got to go break below and tap back or break above and tap back. That's the only two choices in this example. And if you don't see it this clearly, then the, the answer is no trade. I don't know if that's helping you or not. 
but you take the one that is in line with the context in the background. How do you, you, there's no way it was both sided. The book had to be flipped off of an anchor. There's no way. You couldn't have had, it could have went either way. I could say that all day about anything. You have to look at the big, the context in the background. What's the likelihood? Okay, if you had this, I, I don't remember exactly what you're talking about because I only saw the bias a certain way, right? I saw this developing for the week. So sell, 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 buy. That's all I saw, right? You had day one, swing high lock, right? They took out the level, went in here, and we know this. these played out as M sometimes, and W. So I had, from last week, it was sell, sell, sell. I expected one more push to hit the stops and then buy. I didn't sell in the early part of London, although that would have worked out. I waited for this reversal going into the US session. That was the better move. Please send me a picture. The thing is, if you if you have a question about which way it goes, then you have zero trade. There's no trade. Okay, yesterday, all day, especially in Euro, a lot of consolidation, nothing really clear. There was a couple little M's and a couple little W's I could have went. But why? I had a fantastic week following the cycle that I was taught. Why do I have to keep pushing it every single day to try to prove a point? We're way past that. Or you should be way past that. You don't have to get a trade every day. You have to end up with net positive pips by the end of the week, the end of the month, and the end of the quarter. That's the goal. All right, and I don't know what you saw. You gotta send it to me, because I didn't see, obviously I didn't see the same shit you're talking about. All right. Let me get into this stuff. I'm already burning into my time. All right. So look, I talked about Bruce Lipton last week, and I got this email, and this kind of hurt my feelings. Please include all the information you have on Mr. Bruce Lipton. How do you feel is best way to study this information? BTMM. So are you asking me the best way to study this guy or the best way to study my stuff? I'm pretty sure I'm clear on this. And this, I gave you everything I got, man. I gave it to you. All right, so if you're here, comment, please. I don't understand this email. Like Shit like that hurts my feelings. I gave you everything I had. I told you what to buy. I told you how to do it. You got to watch the guy's channel, man, and sort that shit out. It's different for everybody. I told you how I found the guy, exactly who I went to, what I did, and I was coached by one of his practitioners and how I got here, and this is what I ended up doing. I don't know how else I can make it any clearer than that. Did anybody else have any questions about that? Like, was is this like a, a normal? All right, so I don't know. You guys reading this the same? Does he want information on this or does he want information on this? Anybody? Information on that one or two? Just type a number. Help me out because I, I don't really understand. I know. I, I don't know, man. I, you guys are mixed too. Okay. All right. I don't know if you're here. Speak up. All right. So last week I showed you a student that knocked down 20,000 on a lower win rate, right? And of course, someone has to respond, and I love that. But someone sent me this graphic, and I can't think of a more appropriate way to finish up that segment or to revisit that segment. So if you're trading one to one, you need a 51% win rate. One to two, I hate the way they write these numbers, by the way. I know it's risk versus reward, so they put the risk in front, but I, it's always been like 2R, or to me, 1R, 2R, right? This is 2R, 3R, or three to one, right? You're trading three to one, essentially. So they say one to three, one to four. It just, I don't know, be more correct or whatever, but I've been in the business a long time and nobody ever said it this way, but that's the way they're doing it now, so you gotta go with it. All right, so look. You'll at a two to one, you only got to hit 34%. It doesn't seem right to me, but this is what was sent to me. It's an interesting graphic. I asked it, the context of it. I heard it came from trading view somewhere. Wasn't crystal clear to me. Three to one, you got to trade 
to have to have, be successful. It's pretty amazing numbers, man. Really. So this is very obtainable. Every other trade. But the difference is, and here's the problem. This is where you mess yourself up. Is that you take a trade. You get stopped out for the full boat, 25 pips, 20 pips, whatever you're doing. But then you have a profitable trade and you don't let it run one to one or you don't let it run for the two to one. You cut it, you scratch it out, move stops too early. If you just let the trades go, the math will work itself out. Right? It's as soon as you realize that trading is a math problem tied to emotion. You'll start, you'll start to get it. And it takes it sometimes it takes a minute for someone to get it. Sometimes it takes a year, five years, ten years to understand all that. It's just a math problem. If you can let your trades go to target, you'll be okay. Right? Check this out. If you trade four to one, and listen, it's easy to talk shit and say, oh, four to one, but if you're using a 30 pip stop. Right? Three times four is 12. You got to get 120 take. That's unrealistic. These numbers down here are unrealistic. But this right here, this is not what I want for you. I actually want better than that, but this is the sweet spot right here. Two to one, three to one. That's doable. 10 pip stop, 30 pip take. Right? 15 pip, 45 pip take on, uh, Three to one, that's doable, very doable. Depends on the pairs you're trading, GBP, that gives you uh, three to one pretty consistently. You just got to make really good entries. The rest will take care of itself. The business is a math problem. All right, I just thought that was a great follow-up. All right, so this was a very lengthy email. I cut it down to the last part. So the person asked me, how do they proceed after going through the classes and stuff? What setups should I master first? The one that I found the easiest. You kind of answered your own question right there. If you see it and it's easy, that should become your trade. All right, should I start a demo account where I'm taking 10,000 before I try the same with real money? Yes, 100%. And I always said, practice with what you have to use or lose or whatever. But I've, I haven't been a fan of this stuff, but I'm coming around now, is that if you got 10 grand, you should practice an FTMO demo and use the 10 grand to fund yourself to buy leverage up, right? What does a $200,000 account cost? Anybody know? Or a $100,000 account, right? You should practice with whatever you're going to do. It's a thousand bucks, okay. Well, he's got 10 stabs at it, 2,500, okay, whatever. Whatever's reasonable, spend the 1,000 bucks, and he's got 10 shots at 1,000 bucks to get qualified, right? He can do it 10 times before he burns through that money. Surely, if he, if he trades with whatever, I don't know, let's say it's 100,000. If he trades with a $100,000 account and practices with that and can do it, it's great. But look, I've heard some things. I've, some people send me emails, talk to me. You guys know that. I heard that they made the time to qualify faster. But you got to understand, you got to be smarter than that. Why would they do such a thing? Because they want you to feel good and strong, and they want you to send them the cash. That's the business. It's a business model. But you have to treat it like it's real, and you have to keep the capital employed. You cannot... Qualify for your demo, sit on your hands and do nothing, and then the next month you have the real money and think you're going to keep trading through and, and not and not get jammed up. You need to work all four weeks of the month when you're doing the demo, and you need to work all four weeks, right? All four weeks when you're trading the actual trading the money. But this is this is the problem is if a thousand bucks is a lot to you, then you're going to feel social pressure or pressure on yourself to be successful but a thousand bucks to control 200,000 or whatever the number is 250 I don't know whatever it is a thousand bucks to control that with the opportunity to trade it manage it it's huge because now what, what do you take 10 lots 
it depends on your risk, 10 or 15 lots on something like that, right? And if, if by the way, if 15 lots is your max and you want to take multiple trades, you got to come in with three fives, right? And you got to go 30 pips or you got to come in with two eights, two sevens or a seven and an eight, maybe just a pair of sevens. If you're going to take two trades on two instruments, right? And then you got to find out that if you're in a trade and you're up and you put your, you block the margin, right? You guys know when you take a trade, there's front side margin and back side margin. The back side margin is the balance left in your account for you to burn. So what happens is, is that once your stop is at break even, then that trades off the books, the margins protected. And then you should be able to take another trade. But I don't know if that's how it works. You guys need to check the rules on that. But that's any account you're trading anywhere in the world, anywhere on the planet. You get front side margin, right? Your front side and then your back side. Okay, so back side, front side is what it takes to control the contract. Depending on the leverage in the account, all those things are based on other things. If you're trading futures, you have what they call day trading margin and rollover at settlement time at 4 p.m., right? So what happens is, let's just say they give you 500 per contract day trading margin, right? 200 to one, 400 to one, or whatever the dealer is. At four o'clock, they drop it down to whatever that Dodd bill was. It's like 16 to one or some bullshit. And it, they'll pretty much wipe your account out if you got a large order on. So you got to be settled at 4 p.m. on rollover or they take you to, to overnight margin requirement and they'll take you right out of the trade and burn you. All right, they'll pretty much eat up your whole account, getting the margin off you. So you close your trades. You need to make sure of these things, okay? So front side margin, lock the contract. Back side margin is your entire account that's left. If you have no stop, okay? Your stop goes out to break even up front. This is block two. This is off the books. This is off the books. Depends on the dealer. I have a feeling that they'll use that on a rollover to get you out or to burn you. you Got to keep an eye on that stuff. All right, what are the bound safety ID trades? Car's got a set of rules. What's better about the candle closing through the 13 EMA on M&W patterns? Well, the idea was that years ago, we didn't really have the stuff that's available to us now. So the idea was on your box set up over here, when the moving average is crossed over here like that and price got below it right there, you're usually in a good place to shift bar occurred or you're below the apex nadir part of the trade. So by the time the 13 rolled over and caught up and price went through, you're already looking at something like that. So the idea was the confirmation signal became a close above or below the 13. And that's what we had available to us 20 years ago when I started the business, that's what was around. I mean, I used, the first platform I ever used had two flags of the countries you wanna trade. And that was it. You had to get a separate feed for charting and a separate feed to uh, execute the orders platform. It's just different, man. It's not like that anymore. I'm I'm using shit in my my office that I never even thought was possible. Book map giving me volume, liquidity levels, and the, all these crazy screens and power and computer. It's amazing change, man. I grew up through all this crap, and it's, it's just been crazy. I've showed you guys my first office. It was horrible. I had those big CRT things on the table. They were like, they were 17 inch and I thought I was balling. Those things were like $1,000. They were like having an old fashioned TV console on your desk and I had like five or six of them. Crazy. And the first time a, a TFT monitor came out, thin film transistor. First it was MAG was the brand. First flat panel I ever owned. And then Samsung dominated the panel business. That's all I buy now. TVs in the house are all Samsung, and the, and the panels I trade on all Samsung. They got a way better panel. Anyway, I haven't very few dead pixels, if any at all, on any Samsung I ever owned. All right, next one. A few more minutes. I'm not getting as far along as I wanted to. Okay, this is a massive email. It's in three parts, but let me just go over where I, what I wanted to cover. Okay, so hope all is well. FTMO demo. He passed. He did it. Right, he paid a fee for the 200k. He made his first trade 980, felt great. Now he feels bad. Okay, this is what started some of this stuff talking about this. So he finds a good trade, more setup. 
he was rules, 20 lots, 10 pips, stop loss, all this, right? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what happened? He felt like he was in a downtrend. And he just kept going. So I've talked about this before, but I guess it's important to outline it for what it is. So there's a thing that's called trade or session degradation, right? As the opportunity wears on, it gets later in the session. The ability for that to complete to profit starts to diminish or degrade. Right. So here's some of the issues that this happens for people. Right. First of all, the most profitable opportunities come just inside the gray boxes on the session side of the gray box. Right. So if you have your gray box. And you start to notice this, cut the gray box in half. OK, this is gap time. We got we know this, but I'm going to cover it. It's GT gap time. OK, so coming out of London at the end of the blue box, you have some motion here. Then the new dealer comes on, the new operator comes on. So you're looking for an Asian, an Asian session push. In this example, I'm just going to draw a high side. And then it comes in about middle of gap time and the London guy comes on. And then you get his takeover move based on whatever they got going. Right. And that's how the M will form sometimes. And you know that anything that forms in here, high of the day, low of the day, is a Brinks trade. I haven't said it because I just figured it's in the tapes. So I don't got to talk about it every day, but apparently I do. So let's say you get your M formation high of the day, right? And you and you sell it. That's your Brinks trade. It's the highest probable trade at the session open at the right appropriate time. All the elements are there, right? And to be more precise, you would get like a three push into the high and it would go right into the first part of the box and repeat the level, not take out the level and close below here. That's the perfect set. This is going to be about the first third of the first quarter of the session to develop. Okay, now, as the session wears on, right, the timeline, let's say the timeline is zero, then you got it in thirds every couple of hours, right? One third of the session, you could still take opportunity. But as you get to about halfway through the session, and then you get towards the last end where you're getting into like New York time, the 6.30, 7, 8 o'clock hour, that's coming to the end of the session and the turnover of the other box. The other box doesn't print till nine, right? Depending on how your chart set up, it's either nine or 10 or eight to nine. But when you start to approach the other box, the market gets aggressive and then it goes sideways. And then it'll come back on and do the reversal or do what it does. But you don't want to be executing trades in here. You also, a lot of traders lose count when they're in something, they're excited, and they get the level two pullback, which is approximately 50%, right? So you get this move down into L2, and then L2 will come all the way back to here. So if you got in here, and you're sitting on break even, or you're sitting on, just leave your stops alone, which is okay, but you lose count, L1, L2, push two for the day, and it pulls back and takes you out 50%, and then you get a scratch or a loss on something that was up decent, right? If you're trading impulse legs in a higher volume pair, it's like 30, 30, and 30, right? Do the math. If you get the L2 pullback 50%, no, I don't, I mean 50% of leg one and leg two is a pullback for this entire leg down. One, two, right? A, B, C, D, pull back 50% of the entire move. Yes, I'm shocked that you don't know this. All right, sometimes it's a little further, right? 618, I don't use fibs. I'm just telling you, they pull back 50, 60%, or they pull back 35%. They don't come all the way back. But if you're not aware of this happening and you're getting on over here or chasing some shit down here, and then because it, it's a downtrend, and then they pull back on you because you lost track, that's why you're getting jammed up and throwing money away. So as the session wears on, you get later into the cycle, right? If you have a perfect cycle, right? And it comes back here, hits the 50 bounce, that's your trade for the day. Just because you, you had success here gives you cockiness to take this other trade and it's wrong. Your goal is to get something on the books within the first two to three hours of the open. And if you don't get it, you hold off. 
And then if you're a U.S. trader, same thing, right? You're looking for the New York reversal. That comes at New York. New York goes off at 930. So between 8 and 9, 8 and 10, that's your opportunity. First part of the first part of the day, right? And then from there, if you had a graph, it starts to degrade because what happens? Price goes into consolidation after they make the move. So if you remember my drawing, right? And Jim's drawn it a thousand times after me, right? What happens? Okay, so if you're shorting down here because you're in a downtrend, you're not listening to me because this is coming, right? And ideally, we would put the shadow boxes like right here and right here, right? And of course, I didn't draw this right. There's a deeper pullback here, but you understand, push one, push two, push three into the lows, shadow box reversal back into consolidation. That's ideal, right? Then there's some, there's some other issues. Right, strong close, weak close, right? If it's downside, weak close comes doesn't come back back that much into the end of day consolidation. So if you get on here, you see ticking around, and by four o'clock you got a scratch. You understand? You got to get out and take the little win or the little loss that's on the books and just end it. Same thing happens here. I mean, to be more accurate with this drawing. When you get into somewhere in the cycle and you start approaching this box, you get this flat way sideways print, right? Dealers taking a break or holding the level into the end of the session, right? It could be on the bigger scheme of things on a, a longer time frame. You could have push one, push two, pull back, and then they hold going into the next session. Then they give you the follow through for, for three in the U.S. session. That's typical stuff too. It's just understanding background. That's the entire business is understanding the background. Yeah, box in everything. If you take a five minute chart and start looking for V's and start boxing every single thing in, you'll realize that the entire market can be judged in boxes and, and levels, pushes, right? You get a push, pull back, fails to take out the swing high over here, then you still have downside book. They take out the level. When they take out the level, it confirms that level is still valid. You short it off of a flip. Same thing here. They take out the level. They didn't take out the high swing. In order for a reversal to happen, this has to come all the way back and do that. Right? And if you don't see that, book is still sell side. And I'm not talking about when it goes right up here and rejects. This is still, that could be a level two pullback, flat sideways print where it doesn't go higher, or they could throw a hammer above and come back below. All right, man, I'm breaking my own rules. It's 48. I'm going to end it tonight. I'll be back, man. We'll keep talking about this. I got a lot of emails to cover, a lot of bullshit to talk about. Pretty much, Rose, you always get that crossover. And if you're trading a lower, a lower time frame chart, you'll get it. But yeah, the, the, the safest place, let me ask, answer this last question. The safest place to execute is off an anchor, right? Getting the moving averages to capitulate or, or to, to join in. And then that first touchback, 50 bounce or 200 bounce. And then in line with this other stuff, in line with the context of what's going on, background. Okay? I got a lot more stuff to, to discuss what's going on with people. But I don't. I'm not going to do this to you guys. It's... I want to just get you in and get you out. I don't want, to, want you to be bored with me. I don't, I don't want you to be sitting here going, oh, you're driving me crazy, man. I had enough. All right, so let's end it here. I'll see you guys next week, and I'll pick it up right from here. Good night.